Hey y'all, I've got some updates from last time and I want to share them with you now. Um, and I just, I'm wearing this right now. I don't normally wear this in my office, but I'm wearing it just to kind of demonstrate uh, what I think is changing in terms of precautions, um, according to some of the research that I found. And I also want to share with you a video from my dad. I want to um, do the best that I can to give as many different perspectives as possible on this as it continues to update. So the first thing that I think is important for us to look at is, is where the spread is occurring. Um, and we're, I'm still asking that question, how do I avoid contracting coronavirus while working in a hospital? And we see these areas of spread are predominantly large urban centers with um, population density. Um, and they're of course close to ports of entry and things like that. Um, and I think of those things, the population density is the most concern. And so I want to share with you something that the New England Journal of Medicine uh, recently uh, published. This came from a letter to the editor. And I think the thing that is most significant here is uh, that the type of spread that's occurring and the types of precautions that we may need to employ may need to shift a little bit. We, we need to be reminded that this is a novel virus and that means that it's doing something differently than what we anticipated in the past. And the most significant thing from this data set here is that it's staying suspended in air longer than we initially anticipated. And so I'm calling this an airborne-like precaution that we need to adopt um, because of its ability to stay suspended in air, perhaps related to dust particles or adhesions to things that are um, just more aerodynamic and able to stay aloft longer. Um, so although droplet precautions should still be followed, when, I, when I'm in a public space or something, I'm considering this information here that's indicating that it's, it's able to stay airborne here for, for over possibly three hours. Um, I'm saying 30 minutes to an hour for me. Um, it looks like the other thing that's of concern from this data is that it may stay active on plastic surfaces um, a little bit longer than like stainless steel or something. It, one thing that's noticeable in terms of if you're if you're shipping things to your house or whatever, um, it, it's, it does not stay viable on cardboard for very long. Of course, it doesn't stay viable on copper for very long. So um, again, how does it work? Um, and nothing really uh, here has changed um, in terms of what's actually occurring with the infectious process. But I do want to remind us of this radiographic finding. And I think that's something that's significant if we're dealing with something that's airborne-like. That would hold true as we look at the CT image, we see bilateral involvement um, with these areas of consolidation. And that would be similar to something that would be airborne-like. And so, um, again, just we're trying to correlate um, what we're finding um, with, uh, you know, objective measures like CT imaging. So I do want to share a little bit of uh, something from a healthcare worker's front line. This is my dad just talking about his own perspective on the precautions that they're applying at his uh, facility. Hello. My name is Larry Roberts. I'm a 69-year-old physician in Memphis, Tennessee. My son has asked me to give him my perspective on the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, there's about four points I'd like to make about this. First is, don't panic. It, it, all the data looks bad. It's going to be tough. But panic is not going to help. We've got to be in control. We've got to um, follow the CDC guidelines. We've got to work together as a team to get through this. And panic and uh, being difficult with other people is not going to help. Secondly, we need to be praying. We need to be praying for um, encouragement for the people on the front lines still going to hospitals every day, like me. We need to be praying that the virus will uh, mutate and become less lethal, less contagious. Uh, we need to be praying for medications and equipment and things that we're gonna need and, and praying for each other. And we need to just remember to be calm. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of stressful behavior out there, a lot of people who are uh, boiling over with anger and uh, fright. And I, I want you to work on your stress. 
uh, find a way to diminish your stress, either uh, through prayer, meditation, breathing exercises, um, regular exercise. There's lots of things you can do. Research a way to help get your stress level under control so you can be effective and, and you can be helpful. And speaking of being helpful, if you see people in need who need uh, financial help, uh, uh, supplies, toilet paper, whatever, uh, reach into your heart and share. And uh, by everybody working together, uh, we'll, we'll get through this tough time. That's my perspective. God bless you all. Thank you so much for that. Super helpful, Dad. Um, all right. Let me talk to you a little bit about this question. What is novel about it? I think it's helpful anytime that we're dealing with infection control to remember two things. Two things are always important. First off, hand washing. It always comes back to hand washing at some level and cleaning surfaces. Um, the second thing is there's always something that we overlook. There's, there's just kind of a mystery factor. Um, it's something that we, we do every day, um, something that we take for granted. And so that's what I want to ask. What is novel about this uh, novel coronavirus? So um, standard precautions still apply. Hand hygiene 101, wearing gloves, mask and eye protection, wear a gown, wash your scrubs, don't go to the grocery store in your filthy scrubs. Um, honestly, I've seen some technologists posting about um, leaving their scrubs at the door, putting them in trash bags, leaving your shoes at the door of your house. I think all of those things are really wise. Maybe taking a shower when you first get home, those types of things, cleaning your scrubs immediately. Uh, not a bad idea if we're dealing with something that is airborne-like. So this term I'm using, airborne-like, is a made-up term. Uh, it's, it's not something, it, but what, what the reason I'm saying it is because there is a gray area between droplet precautions and airborne precautions. Droplet precautions, we don't necessarily worry about it staying aloft for very long. We just clean surfaces, clean our hands. But if this thing is able to stay aloft, according to that uh, New England Journal of Medicine um, editorial, and again, that's not pure validated research, but um, hopefully it will be validated soon, if it is capable to stay aloft 30 minutes, an hour, three hours in an enclosed space, then I am going to start wearing glasses and a mask in enclosed public spaces, hallways in a grocery store, and clean surfaces, especially plastic. Well, hopefully this was helpful to y'all. Um, it's always helpful for me to kind of get these thoughts together and look at my research. Please like, comment, subscribe below, and let me know what's happening in your area.